Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we are going to iterate with JavaScript for loops. You can run the same code multiple times by using a for loop. Well, by using a loop. The most common type of JavaScript loop is called a for loop because it runs for a specified numbers of times. The loops are declared with three optional expressions separated by semicolons. For, and then you write an initialization, semicolon, condition, semicolon, and then a final expression. And then you close the for loop. The initialization statement is executed one time only before the loop starts. It is typically used to define the setup for the setup, define and set up your loop variable. The condition statement, okay, cool. That's the initialization statement. The condition statement is evaluated at the beginning of every loop iteration and will continue as long as it evaluates to true. When condition is false at the start of the iteration, the loop will stop executing. This means if condition starts as false, your loop will never execute. So if you were to write a condition for var equals zero and then write false in here, then it, the computer would just immediately read, okay, that is unexecutable, or we don't need to execute it. <clears throat> the final expression is executed at the end of each loop iteration prior to the next condition check and is usually used to increment or decrement the, your loop counter. So here, there, this is the final one. This is called the final expression. And that's just incrementing the variable that you set here in this example. In the following example, we initialize with i equals zero and iterate while our condition i less than five is true. We'll increment i by one in each loop iteration with i plus plus in our final expression. So here, our array, um, we're setting it to an empty array, making a for loop where we set the variable of i, which is short for index, to zero. Index is less than five. While i is less than five, then we iterate up. And then we just push through. And so as you can see, it does the same thing in the last one where we wrote a while loop. In this one, we want to do a for loop to work, uh, to work to push the values one through five onto my array. So this one's pretty, um, these for loops are great. And when I was learning how to code, I was kind of, I didn't like them. I liked the while loops because they made more sense to me. But these are now my uh, default go-to um, function. So we want to say for, and then we can say uh, the variable is equal to j. j is equal to 1 because we want to start at 1 through 5, right? So we're going to initialize at 1. And then we're going to say j is less than or equal to 5. So once it gets to five, so that way we'll get um, one and five in our array. And then J, I always like to do plus equals one. Now you can do whatever you want. You could do J plus plus like they do. Or you could go J is equal to J plus one. But I like to do plus equals one because it looks most verbose to me. And then this is just something you want to remember. This is the format of it. If you don't have this uh, logged into your memory, you should just write five or six of these with different numbers because you want to be able to just remember this stuff. So now what we're going to do is my array dot push and then we're going to push in j. Now if we were to console dot log my array we should see um, one, two, three, four, five. If we were to do this before we ran our for loop we would get nothing, right? And so uh, that's it. If I run the test, I think this will pass. Yeah, and so um, if you're kind of um, unfamiliar with this, if you're maybe not sure what to do um, right now, I would say do another one. Do write one where you go count between 10 and, and uh, 15. So if we were gonna do um, 10 and 15, we could create a um, variable 10 to 15 and set that equal to an array. Uh, or that's an equal to an empty array, and we can console log out my array once, or we can comment them out by putting a double slash in here, or pressing command and then the question mark key. And then we can say for their uh, index is equal to zero. No, no, what would we do here? 10 to 15. 10 uh, index is less than or equal to 15, and then index plus equals one. And then we could say um, 10 to 15 is dot push. So we're adding, we're pushing on to the 10 to 15 array, the index. 
And now if we were to console log uh, 10 to 15, here we're going to see We're not getting any feedback just yet, so let's do it 10 to 15 down here as well. Okay, so we're getting some sort of an error. Oh, console.log. There we go. So there's 10 to 15 initially, uh, before and after. Cool, so we're still getting some sort of an error in here. Go to 10. Index is less than or equal to 15. Let's see if we can log out the index. Okay, dot 10 to 15. Did I spell the variable right? Did dot push index. For some reason, it's not logging out. Team before. I N D E X. It's so weird because the index is actually being written out there. We have the variable 10 to 15. So we're getting that all right. What happens if I write 10 to 15 in here? We're actually showing that it's getting logged out as 10 to 15 out here. And so, oh, there we go, console log. That was my problem. And so now you see that it logs out to 10 to 15. And so maybe you could do that for like um, 100. It's kind of fun to do it for huge numbers like um, a million to 2 million. And you could get an array of all those numbers. But uh, that's, this is a very, very commonly used tool. So I would recommend trying to get it into mem muscle memory. Just do a bunch of dist random practices like that. Um, I, my error was the console log issue. But... Uh, as long as you skip that, you should be able to get the hang of writing these out really quickly. So anyways, this passes the tests, and this is all unnecessary. All this stuff is unnecessary. I'm just doing this for the sake of your learning. This is actually the uh, simple, um, truest answer that they're probably looking for. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed that one. We'll see you in the next lesson.